Hello everyone and welcome to episode 5 of my beginner's guide to Kerbal Space Program. And in the previous episode, we spent our time talking about building a rocket that is capable of getting us into orbit. And in this episode, we're going to be flying said rocket and how do we best get ourselves into an orbit. And key number one thing that you need to remember is that it is all about speed so we're going to be talking about that speed we're also going to be talking about what is the best trajectory to get you from a stationary position on the ground up to the speed that you need to be at and while we're flying this trajectory we're going to take another look at the nav ball specifically the velocity part of the nav ball and how the relative velocity part of that all works and we're also going to be taking another look at the SAS controls more specifically those vector locking buttons that can be oh so useful for getting your rocket to go where it is you want it to go and we're going to do all of this while collecting hopefully a buttload of science at the same time but you know what enough dilly dallying let's get ourselves started all right so let's bring up our rocket our impressively named third rocket that we built last episode. We'll check on our pilot. Val flew last time, so this one is going to be Jeb, so let's go. Oh, 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 a little bit of wobbling there, but it's settled itself out. Okay. Now, actually, before I get started with this, one of the things that I think when you watch videos like this one and videos by other people, the impression that we give is that these vessels come at you fully formed, like everything works perfectly for us the first time we try these things. Let me assure you, they do not. I did test this vessel. Right? You should expect to have to test the vessel. You should expect it not to work the first time, despite the fact that you think everything should work. And you should expect to have to go through some iterations to get your thing to work properly. That is part of the process and frankly, part of the fun of Kerbal Space Program. Now, one of the things remember that I do want to accomplish with this is to do a lot of science. I have four of these uh, materials bays uh, one of them actually won't can do this right now. One of them is for down here on the launch pad, so we might as well scoop that up right now. And then we'll just set up the other ones here. One is for flying in the lower part of the atmosphere. This one is for flying in the upper part of the atmosphere. And this one I'm saving for when we are in space. We're just going to tuck them over here to the side. I have more science tucked inside this service bay, so we will open that up. All right, let's, oh, and we have to close <laughs> our service bay. There we are. Okay, so this is pretty much ready to go. All we have to really do is hit the space bar. But before we do that, let's talk about what our objective is. I've mentioned already that getting into orbit is all about speed. Specifically, we need a speed, a horizontal speed, of about 2.25 kilometers per second or if you like 2250 meters per second also we need to attain that speed when we're no longer in the atmosphere because clearly the atmosphere will just slow us down so we have to accomplish two things we have to get above the atmosphere and in ksp the atmosphere has a height of 70 kilometers at 70 kilometers the atmosphere is gone and you are in a vacuum and when we're at that altitude above 70 kilometers we need to attain a speed of about 2250 meters per second so part of this is obviously going to be going up but the part that you often miss if you don't you know if you just watch science fiction movies and stuff is a huge part of it is going to be about going horizontal as well we want to accomplish both of those two things so we're going to start by going up and we're going to slowly pitch the craft over towards the horizontal so that by the time we're at the altitude that we want we will be traveling horizontal we will not be traveling vertical anymore all right second thing I want to show you is down here on the nav ball, if we take a look at the top here, you can see that it's telling us our velocity. Relative to the surface, our velocity, not surprisingly, is zero right now. But if I click on this, it changes to orbit, but more significantly, we are moving at a velocity. This changes what your velocity is being measured relative to. 
Velocity is all about relative motions. You never have velocity without being it relative to something else. And right now it's relative to the center of the planet. Relative to the center of the planet, we are moving right now, standing still on the surface, 175 meters per second. And that is, of course, because the planet is rotating. If we go into map view, we'll bring this around so we can see this. The planet is rotating from west towards east, going round and round and round. So already, we are moving at 175 meters per second towards the east. We would like to get to a speed of 2,250 meters per second, in which direction really doesn't matter, but we are already got some velocity going in this direction. We should take advantage of that. So the most efficient thing to do is actually when you launch to start to go towards the east because then you're just adding to this velocity rather than having that velocity work against you. There may be reasons in other situations to launch in different directions, but if you want to do the most efficient launch, you want to go towards the east. So that's basically going to be our game plan. We're going to start going up. We're going to slowly pitch over towards the east to the point where our altitude gets above 70 kilometers, in which case we will be above the atmosphere. When we get to that maximum altitude, we want to be horizontal, and then we just want to add velocity until we get up to that about 2.25 kilometers per second. All right, enough of that, let's do it. Uh, I'm gonna put on our SAS system. Remember what this does is it locks our current attitude to whatever direction you're going. The vessel just tries to keep going in the same direction, in this case up, though that will clearly shortly change. Um, it also um, gives us the ability to lock to particular uh, vectors that I will be taking advantage of. I'm also go, while I'm thinking about it, put this back to surface because right now I do want relative to the surface. It switches itself to orbit at a reasonably appropriate time later on in our flight. Now, uh, what else do I want to do? Oh, I want to throttle up, of course. We're going to turn the throttle up to being full because right now it doesn't matter because the SRBs is going to be handling the first part of the flight, but at some point we're going to be turning on this liquid fuel engine. Sir, be embarrassing if I you know, didn't come on because I didn't have the throttle up, so doing it now would probably be a good idea. And again, what our plan is gonna be is to go up and then start pitching towards the east. And on the nav ball, east is this 90 degrees direction here. And what's nice actually with the way this is oriented right now, it's kind of the default camera, it helps us out, is east is to the right on the nav ball and it's to the right on the camera. So we're gonna be pitching in that direction going over the water that way. All right, then I think we are pretty much raring to go, so let's punch it. There we are. Right now, I'm just doing my best to keep this going straight up until our speed gets about 50 kilometers or so. There we go. And then I'm going to pitch just a little bit towards the east, and I'm watching that prograde. And that prograde vector, the yellow circle, gets past about 5 degrees. That's pretty good there. I'm just going to lock it. Hit this button here, which locks it onto the prograde. And I'm actually taking my hands away from the keyboard and letting this ride up. Now, why don't we do a Science Junior right now? Because we are ready to do that. There we go. That's our lower atmosphere one. There are... Whoa, whoa, whoa. We need to stage in a moment. There we go. <laughs> our next set of boosters. There is an ideal sort of trajectory for different types of rockets. Um, typically I like to hit the 45 degree mark which is right here at about an altitude of 10 kilometers which is I'm not far off from that so I'm actually kind of happy about what it's going right now but um, you know don't get too obsessed about that because spending too much time adjusting the rocket also induces drag and starts to reduce the efficiency of your launch so just letting it go is also a good idea and you know while i'm thinking about it i'm going to go down here towards the bottom left i'm going to hit this button which gives us some orbital stuff i really want to watch this apoapsis it needs to get over 70 kilometers now we are above 18 kilometers which puts us into the upper atmosphere so that is another science junior boom that is another observation of a mystery goo and we just ran out. Oh, shoot, 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 shoot. There we go. My mistake. Wasn't paying attention. I really should be. Okay, our apoapsis is above 70 kilometers. 
and we'll get it up around 80. There we go. We'll just cut that engine there. I've just turned off the engine. We're going to let this thing just coast. So we did that. We did that. Should have actually probably waited on that. Can we do a crew report? Yes, we can do a crew report. Excelente. Can we do a barometer? No barometer. I guess we have gone up into, and no thermometer. I guess we've been into high science with those before. Okay. So we're just going to ride this up for now. Let this keep going. Um, we're still in the atmosphere, but we are on our way out. And I want to just talk about what the plan is. So here's our apoapsis. I'm just going to right click on it so we can see it. We're about a minute and a half away. So no need to panic right now. We're going to get there. And I haven't talked about this yet, but KSP does give something called a maneuver node, but I haven't talked about it. So I'm not going to use it. We're going to just kind of do this by hand, by eyeball. Um, we'll talk about maneuver nodes in a future episode. So right now our trajectory you can see is going up and then it's going to crash back down into the surface. What we need to do is add on, remember water velocity needs to be about two and a quarter kilometers per second. Right now it's about 1.3 something kilometers per second. And when we add the velocity, we're going to flatten this trajectory out to the point where it becomes roughly a circle going all the way around the planet. And when that happens, that is when we're going to be in an orbit. So we're going to get ourselves ready. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pitch down till I'm actually horizontal, right on the horizon, just below my thing. And we're just going to start to throttle up here. We're going to start adding velocity. And while I'm doing this, I'm paying attention to this time to apoapsis. I don't want that time to reach zero. I want it to stay fairly close. I noticed now it was actually starting to pause. If you thrust too much, it will actually start increasing the time to your apoapsis. You want to stay as close to apoapsis as you can. And but just, you know, as if keep throttle up as the time goes down, but if the time stops going down, throttle down. I'm going to lock this back on the prograde cuz prograde so close to horizontal now. Okay, let's give a lot of throttle. And again, look at our trajectory. Watch what it's doing. And I'm paying attention also to... It started to get away on me a little bit, so I killed the throttle. But our periapsis is very close. It's just barely out of the atmosphere. You know, I think, why don't we just give us a little bit more throttle? And that is it. So our apoapsis and our periapsis are both above 70 kilometers. We have attained the speed that we required. I said, yeah, it's close enough to two and a quarter. That was a guess anyway. We are now in space. Okay, so now that we are in space, we're gonna be losing the sun pretty soon. Why don't we do a science junior? Okay. We will do a mystery goo. There. We will do a barometer. There. We will do a thermometer. There. And we'll do a crew report. Oh, I have a crew report in there already, so I don't want to overwrite the crew report. So we got to do a little bit of work, Jebediah. And he's going to start taking the science out of this stuff. So collect science. Yep. Collect this science. Yep. And actually, while he's here, he can also do himself an EVA report. And notice with the EVA report, it says over Kerbin Shores. That's a biome. So what that's saying is that if we can get Jeb over different locations on the planet that are not the shores, we can collect even more EVA reports. Let's take what, we can, what we've got so far and store this into the cabin. And in fact, we'll take out that crew report that he had done and store that back in there too. Okay, let's do another EVA report. And notice now it says over the water, eight more science for us. Awesome. Okay, let's see. What other science do we need to collect? So we've collected ourselves a lot of science here, and there's still more to do. Let's get Jebediah inside. There is actually no limit whatsoever to how much of this science you can store inside the capsule. Now, because we have now taken the crew report out of the capsule, I can do another crew report. This crew report just says in space near Kerbin. Notice no biome associated with that. So um, there's no reason to do another crew report. So we'll just keep that. All right. So we did pretty good there. Oh, I see. I don't know if you can see it on the screen, but we are coming across some land here. So let's see if we can pick up some more biomes for Jebediah's EVA report. Let's see, an EVA report. It now says over the grasslands. So that's even more science. We'll store that. 
there. We have now done grasslands, we've done shores, and we've done water. Let's do another EVA report. That's shores, but we've already done that one. There's probably, there's all kinds, there's highlands, there's mountains, there's deserts. Let's take an EVA report, another eight science over the deserts, beautiful. We'll put Jebediah inside. And you know what? I think that's going to do it. There are some bad lands that potentially I could get, but I'm not. They're small and they're hard to find. Also, there's Tundra up at the north and near the north and south pole, as well as ice caps and a nice shelf. But I, this orbit clearly won't be going over the pole. So that is about the end of it. So in order to get ourselves back down, what we're going to do. So this is our... KSC, the little flag here is m m indicating where the Kerbal Space Center is. So we're going to time warp the craft all the way around the planet. I like to always do this in around the same spot so I can shoot for some sort of consistency. Though I'll admit I'm not very good at judging this. But I'm going to stop right around where this peninsula is. There we go, right there. And then we're going to put the craft onto the retrograde vector which is this button here and this points the craft let's watch it this way this points the craft so that we are now going against our motion our orbital motion around the planet and what we want to do to come back down well to get up we had to add speed to come back down we have to remove speed notice we don't burn towards the planet all we want to do is remove our speed and you will find the vast majority of times when you are affecting where you want to be in space you're either burning in the direction you're going or the direction opposite to where you're going uh, there are reasons to burn in other directions but that's the one you'll be doing like 9, 80 to 90 percent of the time anyway we're going to give ourselves a little bit of thrust here and start decreasing our periapsis that's our lowest point i'm going to get that down around 35 kilometers all right let's get ourselves over there and see how we do Okay, so you can see now our altitude here at the top is going down. Again, when we hit 70 kilometers, that is going to be us hitting the atmosphere. All right, so we're pretty close to 70 kilometers. This is something I like to do is I like to turn the craft so that I'm 90 degrees to the direction I'm going. We're going that direction, so this is 90 degrees to that direction. And then we're going to hit stage. And then we're going to go back onto the retrograde vector. And that pushes this off of our path so that I don't have to worry about potentially running back into that. I always like to do that rather than pushing it ahead of me uh, where I can end up running back into it. It's unlikely, but it can happen. Or if I push it behind me, it can actually catch up to me and run into me. Okay, we have just entered into the atmosphere. To be honest, you don't have to have SAS on anymore. I can turn that off. The shape of this capsule naturally will orient it as it goes through the atmosphere to keep it in this orientation with this heat shield in the direction in which you're moving, which is a good thing. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of time warping to speed this up. In fact, what I'm also going to do is take this heat shield and we're going to pin it over here because I want to show you something, a couple of things with it as, as we make our way down. Oh, that's an indication that uh, we have become suborbital once again. We are definitely on our way back down. see a bit of a glow starting to happen on our heat shield and the other thing to notice here is the ablator is starting to go down ablator is a material that is designed to absorb the heat and then wear and break off and take the heat along with it thus protecting the capsule you have a limited amount of ablator but frankly you actually have a ton of it <laughs> you could take easily at least half of this away in the VAB if you wanted to shed a little bit of weight Okay, now we're really starting to see some heating effects happening. Some people like to think that this is from friction, but it's actually a result of the air being compressed super 
uh, a, a great deal at the front edge of this. It's not friction with the capsule that's causing this this uh, fiery plasma mass around it. It's actually the air being superheated as it's being compressed as the capsule goes slamming into it. All right, so all the way through this, our, our uh, parachute was in red. You can hit it beforehand, and what it does is it just arms it. The parachute is not going to deploy until it's safe to do that. So I just arm the parachute. If you want, you can wait until you're ready to do thing. It's gone yellow, and then it went good, and now the parachute is deployed. I am sorry that I'm landing in the dark, but hopefully you can still see everything fairly well. 30 meters from the ground and touching down and I suspect there's more science to get here. So Jebediah will get out and scrounge up what he can and then we'll recover and we'll see how he did. Okay, so that little adventure netted us 194.1 science giving us a total of 216 science. And while I go into research and development and decide how I'm going to be spending my bounty, why don't we go over what we looked at in this episode? Obviously, the main theme was getting to orbit. And in order to get into an orbit, you need to accomplish two things. You need to get yourself above an altitude of 70 kilometers. And just as importantly, you need to build horizontal speed. To do this the most efficiently, it is best to pitch towards the east shortly after launch. Once your apoapsis is up to the desired altitude, you can then coast to your apoapsis and then as you approach apoapsis, you can burn horizontally to pick up the speed you need and to create your orbit. We also talked quite a bit about science, and actually specifically what we talked about was the importance of paying attention to biomes. Which biomes are you in, and which experiments can you redo in different biomes, and which experiments you cannot. And with all that, I think I'm going to be drawing this episode to a close. I hope that you found this useful. Getting to orbit is always one of the sort of early hurdles that a KSP player needs to get over. But once you do, it opens up vast new places in the game. I thank you for watching, and I hope to see you for the next one.